So let us uh, move on IG parts. This is most important because uh, each part will have a lot of effect towards uh, IG performance, whatever we talked about the applications uh, uh, benefits. So these parts, each part will do a, a better job as a nature. Uh, it will deliver for us a performance. So let us look at it, uh, what are the IG parts. So having said that, there are two pans or there are more pans also together. You can hermetically sealed primary and secondary silicone that by you can separate it by aluminum channel. Okay, so this is the construction. It's a typical construction of IGU insulated glazing unit. So let us look at it uh, as a face like it from the exterior portion. The first pane you are seeing the glass. So the glass can be a, one of the best uh, element in terms of DGU which occupies a lot of space. It delivers a lot of performance like light comes in, goes, reflect, internal reflection, outside reflections, what you value selections what color of your facade has to be. So the glass occupies a lot of uh, space. It's a first, I mean, it's a prime function of the glass. The prime parts of IG is, it's a glass. The next is the butyl, which is ensure water vapor tightness, which will not allow any water to seepage inside the IG unit or if any moisture at the time of glazing, if any water moisture would have been there, Okay, it will not allow to penetrate into the secondary cylinder. Thereby, you'll have a loss of insulation problems. It will come. So that will be. It'll give you a ensure water tightness. It prevent vapor tightness. I mean, it allows structurally, you know, strengthable. And this butyl will help us, like in the deflection, like high wind load. So the glass may tends to leave, like uh, it deflect during those deflection periods. So this uh, butyl will help enable us, uh, enable, enable glass to, uh, tends to move from like one original portion to 2 mm, 3 mm with help of butyl. So that's the stuff uh, it can have from butyl. And next is a secondary silicone, protect basically from exterior, exterior conditions like uh, uh, water vapor or chemical vapor or rainy season, what are our sun exposure, what are the messy outside is there, so in order to avoid to protect to water inside, so the secondary sealant structurally will give a structural uh, uh, strength to the IGU as well as it prevent this abnormal uh, conditions like water, humid, hot gases or fumes or chemical agents in our need not to penetrate inside the DGU. So that secondary silicon will prevent those abnormalities. Let us look at it next is a spacer and the spacer is a weight in nature is very very it's aluminum spacer. It is a hollow spacer. It won't weigh much when compared to the glass but it has a lot of quality. Basically it gives a mechanical strength. Basically it separates two glass. It will give a space of a two pan which should not a sagging effect. So it will help us to separate the glass pane in a proper manner. So we will have to fill this desiccant. So the desiccant perform impact on the uh, condensation effect. If the IGU need to protect the condensation, so that your desiccant has to be a proper one. So the desiccant would absorb the water moisture from which is present in the DGU or if anything is comes inside, it will absorb the water moisture or hydrocarbons. It should not absorb any uh, thermal performance gases like uh, organ gas, like inert gas which we talked about organs and non krypton it should not absorb it so that desiccant should uh, it's a profound so widely used in all of the facade i mean all of the igu igu insulated glazing unit again one more thing the wherever the separated the dry air either you can space between the two glasses either you can keep it as a vacuum or you can keep it as a dry air or you can fill it with the argon gas or xenon and krypton whichever form you want to use it as a well then you can decide based on the performance what you wanted, you can go ahead, we can select it. So each components here which is widely, uh, you know, highly helpful uh, for in terms of you know, uh, serving this for us to be uh, happy in, inside the building. So these parts are widely, you know, highly helpful for making you know, IGU you know, grand success. Next more on the technical fundamentals of IGU. So, which we discuss about it. So, uh, IGU it's nothing but there are two or more pan panels, glass, 
separated by a mechanical uh, aluminum channel which is uh, hermetically uh, sealed with help of a primary and secondary silicon. So this is how uh, IGU uh, construction which you talked about. Uh, IG parts like uh, air might be a dry air or be a vacuum or inert gas organs and on krypton which we discuss about. There is an overview of IGU. The first is the most important is glass cutting and grinding. It's a first prime, it's a pre-processing what we call this in the IG process. It's a pre-processing. So you'll have to draw the glass from the warehouse. You have to keep it on the loading table. Order size you want to do it. So you can have to optimize and that way you have to cut it and snap it and you have to store it and grind it. And the grinding is most important because if the any shell form or in the grinding is not proper, proper uh, the glass would tends to break at the uh, uh, tempering section. So in order to avoid, as it need not to be, I mean, it may not to be serve only tempering area. It serves people like to, to handle it from one place to other place. So the, uh, the after cutting, the grinding, it's, uh, you know, it helps us for uh, uh, the workers to handle the glass in a safe manner. So basically, we are eliminating the sharpness from the, from the edges. So we are erasing or you can polish or it can be done like a single edger, double edger, or uh, seaming machine. There are three types of machines are available to grind the surface. And washing and tempering, yes, washing is most important. Not only washing, it each, each process in IG is very, very, very critical. If you do any mistake, it will be replicate at the end of the IGU. So we'll have to be very careful in terms of all the process. So washing, like again, if you use a low E glass processing, water level, like uh, it should be the pH of 6 to 8 pH and should be less than 10 micro siemens. And temperature, and most of the processor should not follow the temperature on the water tank. So temperature should be more than 35 degree. It solves the growth of bacteria or the, the hot water, basically it serves a lot of cleaning effect. But most of time, people are using the cold water, which not help us in the long run. So the temperature also it's most be you know widely used I mean it has to be used more than 35 degrees centigrade has to be used at the time of washing machine and drying drying it's most important if any water surface water droplet present on the low E or the normal cold glasses if you fed into the furnace it will break and so again it will if suppose if it is not breaking so if it is a low E glass or any other like ceramic glass anything is there the coating burnt because of the water uh, droplet were, were present on the coated surface. It will have an effect of after tempering. So washing is most uh, precision process in terms of IGU because that way uh, it will allow you to uh, enable you to see and you have to thorough quality check before taking to the tempering. So tempering as you all know about it, it's basically we are you know increasing the strength of the glass from anneal glass to tempered glass which is uh, four to five times the strength. So it's a heating process. So we have talked about the pre-processing and tempering. So let's move on to the IG process. So IG process, it's a frame manufacturing is the first process. Basically, it's not, nothing but the aluminum channel will be, it comes under running meters. So based on this, your size, you'll have to bend it. Either you have to cut or you have to bend it. So there are two ways. If you want to cut it, then you'll have to use a corner key to join it. If you want to bend it, even only two bends are required is it from the top and bottom. So it can be used only the another band can be one more uh, corner can be used. And uh, after bending or before bending, you can do a molecular sieve. It can be filled on the hollow uh, aluminum channel. That's a process. Either you can do it manually or you can do it on the uh, automatic machines, robotic machines. So nowadays people are robotic machines you should, but we would always advise you to use uh, robotic or automatic machines. So it help us because uh, if you use uh, manually filled uh, with the desiccant, so whatever the whoever is fills it, so if he's not using the gloves or the gloves is got uh, dirty or it is, uh, has a moisture, so that uh, moisture will absorb by the desiccant, so you'll have a less uh, durability of IGU. So you'll have to protect that one because uh, the desiccant has a lot of value towards less condensation, viewable, uh, viewability, transparency, a lot of things. So you'll have to be very careful. So we would advise you to use uh, automatic uh, filling machine for molecular seed and butyl applications. Uh, once it is filled, so based on the shape what you record of the project, 
then you have to take it to this next machine it calls a butyl extrusion metal basically there are two pumps there are two nozzles are there which pumped which is uh, dis uh, dispensing the uh, butyl which is uh, primary silicon through the two nozzles from one side to other side then you take out this it'll be you know uh, in a uniform form you have to take it and gently uh, to keep it on the glass pan so we we'll have to use very precautions here because our thumb mark like fingerprint mark should not be impressed on this uh, primary silicon because it will be see through when the time of pressing so we will be able to understand the fingerprints will be able uh, will be there after pressing it basically a finished group you can see that so in order to prevent that you have to use a gloves or better not to touch with your fingers gentle holding so that's uh, expertise you know, based on the experience you will have a more experience you can get an expertise on this. Next is process uh, is the frame positioning, which once the glass is washed and once the bending, uh, molecular sieve filling and beauty application is done and carefully you have to keep it on the uh, glass, which is first glass which washed and comes as uh, stands for ready for a uh, adjoining with this uh, frame. So one glass has come, then we'll have to keep this uh, filled desiccant filled aluminum frame on the glass carefully you have to keep it and there will be another glass will come then there will be a next is the pressing and basically pressing six bar will be applied on this uh, time of pressing during the pressing it will be automatically you can have suppose if you want to use any inert gases like uh, argon xenon krypton you can use it you can fill it with a uh, at the time of filling it can be you know, automatically can be done so gas filling as well next is uh, uh, sealant extrusion uh, most of the people are using manually but we would advise you to go for the robotic sealant so that uh, you not you don't have a sagging effect because uh, uh, one more thing it has to be done the secondary silicon operation should be done on the vertical in nature rather than doing on the horizontal because horizontal based on the self weight of the glass the one glass you kept and another glass you kept it based on the the length width is higher than the 2 meter 2.5 meters the center portion will have to have a, a sagging effect if you do on the horizontal glazing uh, other ways like if you use a, if you use it on the vertical glazing you don't uh, expect that uh, sagging effect would comes which plays at the time of secondary silicon silicon application so we'll have to um, keep in mind so either it will be automatic which is robotic or should be a vertical uh, application of uh, secondary silicon. Uh, so the secondary silicon the main uh, function of a secondary silicon the moment you apply within three to four hours you can you can dispatch the glass because it has a you know the curing rate is very faster when compared to the primary silicon whereas primary silicon will take uh, more than 36 or 48 hours to cure completely whereas secondary silicon its immediate effect even with an hour you can shift it from one place to other place but we would advise to dispatch probably after four hours be ideal uh, for you to dispatch because your silicon would uh, completely curing not only the outer layer the inner layer also would get uh, cured within a four span of time so it can be you know dispatched after curing it can be dispatched in a proper manner and main ig process so we discussed about the pre-processing you know like uh, cutting grinding washing tempering uh, and let's move on to the ig process the ig process this mainly uh, frame fabrications it's a most important process and uh, uh, having said that desiccant filling once it desiccant filled so wherever the puncture you are done so those area has to be carefully we have to use butyl to uh, plug that hole please do not leave it wide or please do not open because the desiccant have been inside that air vent uh, there will be a possibility of uh, you know, getting the moisture through this vent so it has to be once it is hole is done once you, I mean once you filling there's a desiccant uh, after that you have to take back and fill with this uh, butyl which is basically primary silicon to plug it and you can go for a you know uh, next operation which means frame uh, positioning of the frames on the glass 
So this is the uh, next uh, step for uh, Ig process, which means uh, primary silicon, which will be uh, taken to the primary extruder machine, which will be a uh, uh, part of Ig process. The, though it is will be, you know, uh, it's it's not offline product. You can say it's uh, another machine. It's not uh, uh, joined along with the Ig process. Will be uh, another machines like uh, you know, accessories machines kind of like this, where you can do a. a um, primary extrusion through this uh, butyl extrusion machine and and carefully we have to press it after done that we have to pressing is taking place during the pressing we can if you want to use a, a gas filled you can have a gas filling can be done on this and after that uh, robotic sealing uh, vertical glazing can be done to, uh, with help of uh, uh, secondary silicon. So this is the main IGU process. So you'll have to keep in mind the free processing and tempering is most important. After that, uh, this is the main concept. You'll have to understand the main IG process. So frame positioning, I mean frame uh, fabrication, um, desiccant filling, uh, primary extrusion on the aluminum channel and uh, pressing with the gas filling and the secondary applications, which is secondary silicon applications.